Great, thank you, and happy to be here. So thanks, everyone, for, for attending. So um, the first thing I want to say is that if you look at the world of analytics, it's changed significantly in the last five years. And this is owing in large part to a technology transformation that's happening across every layer of the technology stack. So that's across storage options, compute, messaging, databases, applications. And of course, that bleeds into the analytics consumption itself. But the, the change isn't finished by any means. It's still ongoing. And you only have to look at the, um, the investments that enterprises are making for AI and machine learning. But the challenge is that, um, and according to the Databricks research, only 1% of these AI ML projects are successful. So the question is, why are they so difficult? Well, the difficulty comes not with the AI itself and the ML code, which is actually a very small part of the puzzle. It's actually because a view that we share with, with Databricks is that it's because of the uh, challenges around the data. So the problem with AI some challenges that are very typical and things that we've been experiencing at Informatica over the last 26 years. So these are very common things uh, around data scientists spending most of their time actually preparing the data and leaving them less time actually to, to model the data. I really like the, uh, the quote from, from Ali in the, in the keynote this morning where he said they're spending the rest of the time actually complaining about the data. Um, there's also other more generic data challenges, so needing to deal with ever-increasing volumes of data, data from a variety of different sources in batch and streaming. And above all, there's a lack of governance, making the data very difficult to find and therefore almost impossible to provision. Data engineers also spending most of their time actually trying to solve these problems on an ad hoc basis uh, without any automation, so a lot of repetitive tasks and having to capacity plan for how to process complex data workloads at big data scale. So we believe at Informatica that automating this using end-to-end -end data engineering really is the key to solving these data challenges, and that's what we've been doing over the last 25 years, um, and can help you to achieve success with your AI ML projects. So Informatica is a leader in enterprise cloud data management. Uh, we've been servicing customers for end-to-end -end data engineering cases now for several years. Uh, it all starts with an end-to-end -end story from the customer in terms of what they need to do on their data journey. So it's end-to-end -end because it captures everything from ingesting the data and other data integration patterns along the way, like integration, streaming, preparing the data, enriching it, applying data quality, cataloging the data so you can see things like the lineage, securing the data, applying masking and anonymization, and other things for protecting it before delivering it to the end applications and end users. Uh, we're built on top of a hybrid, multi-cloud ready platform, and we're metadata driven. And what this really means is that we abstract away all of those technology changes that I spoke about across the various stacks, which allows our customers to be able to make rapid changes and change direction and adopt new technologies that will help with their analytics and AI projects. We also cross the center here. You see mention of Claire, which is our AI engine. And we essentially use a lot of machine learning capabilities within our own platform to automate many of these data integration patterns through recommendations to developers and other users, and also really accelerating their, their journey with, with the data management piece itself. So we've got a very strong partnership with Databricks. In fact, yesterday we received the ISV Partner Impact Award, for which we're very proud. Um, and this really stems from the significant R&D investment that we've made on, on our side as well, which is to um, invest in multiple areas to work with the Databricks platform. So I'll, I'll talk about each of these just briefly and then give you a few more details. So firstly, we provide a, a data catalog which allows us and, and users to, to be able to uh, discover data, to figure out what they're, what they're looking at and see the lineage. Uh, we provide ingestion and integration capabilities so they can ingest data into a data lake or more specifically, the Databricks Delta Lake. And we provide a data engineering capability for users to build pipelines in batch streaming for data quality, data masking, and run these using Databricks as the execution engine. 
So effectively generating Spark code that runs on, on Databricks. And this is actually cyclical because when you look at it after you've built this, these pipelines, these are reusable pipelines, but also we can scan the metadata from those pipelines and enrich the views from the data catalog perspective. So you can see an updated lineage with things like the transformations that are being applied through the Databricks engine along the way. So this is the vehicle for that, the Enterprise Data Catalog. It provides uh, you know, a very easy way of cataloging all of your data in the enterprise and offering that to various personas, whether it's business users, data engineers, data scientists, so that they can actually go in and easily f search and discover trusted data within the enterprise. Um, it also shows data relationships, the things like data lineage. So you can see here an example of SQL Server source into the, uh, the Delta Lake, uh, but also which, who are the data owners? Who are the, stu the data stewards who are responsible for this data? And what are the different interactions? Uh, we provide an integrated business glossary as well as crowdsourcing capabilities so that all the different personas can collaborate by reviewing assets, giving them a rating, signing them as trusted assets. Uh, and we use all of that in our own search indexing so that uh, users that are going shopping for data can actually find what they're looking for with confidence that the, the most significant results will be nearer the top of their search results. Then we have the data engineering portfolio for building these additional pipelines for integration, streaming, data quality, and masking. With integration, we can help with ingestion of the data and preparation of that data for the right format for the data scientists. Data engineering streaming allows us to do that from a streaming perspective or within the same user interface. Uh, so we can deal with streaming pipelines at scale. Data engineering quality allows us to ensure that the data that goes to the data scientist is both trusted and relevant by providing data governance on Spark. And data engineering masking allows us to anonymize and de uh, depersonalize the data so that the data scientist can build models based on sample data sets that don't have production data within them. Now, what the data scientist will do is build this model and then give it back to the data engineer so they can incorporate it back into our data engineering pipelines and run that against the production data. So we can take Python code from the data scientist and, and reintroduce those into a data engineering pipeline. So why should you use Informatica for data engineering? Well, there's three areas I want to quickly talk about. No code, no ops, and no limits on data. No code is very important because we have a number of customers who started out with on-premise Hadoop data lakes, and now they're starting to migrate to cloud data lakes using engines like Databricks. For them, they've invested in Informatica. They can just make configuration changes and redeploy the logic to run there. So whether it's generating SQL code that runs on a data warehouse or generating Spark code that runs on Databricks and is optimized for Databricks, that's something we can do all through our graphical user interface. No code also means handling complex data structures. So we use our AI engine Claire here to be able to detect structures, complex structures in the data, unstructured data, uh, and provide a defensive way of protecting against changes in the data. So there's several ways that you can handle complex data and changes in that data using dynamic mappings uh, and also our, our ability to adapt to any changes and intelligently handle those. Now I want to talk about no operations. So no operations means not just building data pipelines, but being able to inject those into a workflow so that we can spin up Databricks clusters automatically, scale them as needed based on your complex data workloads, and then tear them down at the end. So we support um, advanced Spark options as well, like auto-scaling, and we're also uh, able to support multiple versions of Spark. So as you migrate to new versions, of the Databricks engine, we can regenerate code that is optimal for, for the new versions. So we've got several examples of this in the past, but you know, customers that will move to Spark 3.0 in the future don't have to rebuild or rewrite any, any code. They can just regenerate. No operations also means operational insights. We can deliver predictive uh, monitoring and operational insights on these actual deployments running on, on Databricks or other Spark deployments. And then there's no limits on data. 
which allows us to very quickly ingest data in, from any source to, to any target. So this can be from streaming sources, database sources, files, uh, and we provide a very sig significantly quick way of doing this using a five-step wizard. Our view at Informatica is that data ingestion isn't something that should be solely the responsibility of the data engineer. It's something that the data owners and the application owners should be able to do themselves. So we make that very easy to do, whilst handling all of the, the complex options around that, such as supporting different uh, data formats like Parquet and Delta Lake and so on, but also compression and, and encryption. No limits on data also means being able to support batch and streaming from a single user interface. We're now on our third release of our structured streaming support, which allows our customers to build data pipelines that run in a streaming context and operate on the actual event time of the data of when it's generated rather than the processing time itself. So we can deal with things like out of order delivery of messages and high availability and so on. So this is an example reference architecture of how many of our customers are using us with, with Databricks uh, using ADLS, Blob, and you know, now moving to more Delta Lake as the storage layer. So we can help to ingest the data into ADLS, Gen, Gen 2, for instance, Azure, Databricks can, can run um, through the uh, Spark support that we have. And uh, we can store results back into ADLS Gen 2 or actually even move it into something like a SQL data warehouse on Azure. Um, and we can provide cataloging and lineage of this entire end-to-end -end process. Here's an example of a customer that's using us with Databricks. So Takeda is a large pharmaceutical in the US. Uh, so this is a public reference for us. What's really interesting about their story is they started out with a Hadoop data lake on-premise, which they, used, they built using our data engineering solution. They then switched to Azure, and they began to use Hadoop on, on Azure. And they're now in the next iteration of that, the third iteration, which is to run this on, on Databricks, uh, Databricks and, uh, and, go, and distance themselves from, from Hadoop. So all, all the while, they're able to reuse the mappings that they built with Informatica. Uh, they're actually standing up um, you know, an enterprise-wide uh, data lake for self-service capability across R&D, operations and, and other areas of the business. So in summary, some critical success factors for your AI ML projects. Firstly, Informatica can help you to search and discover data wherever it may reside in your enterprise. We can accelerate movement or migration of the data to Databricks from either an on-premise data lake or some other sources within your organization. We can help you to rapidly prepare and enrich the data for your data scientists before they begin modeling, so spend more of their time on their core competency. And we can increase productivity with a zero code, no code user interface to facilitate your data engineering pipelines. And finally, you can go serverless using Informatica and Databricks together to be able to process data at scale in Databricks on any cloud, whether it's AWS or, or Azure. So um, that concludes the presentation. If you'd like to learn more, please stop by the Informatica booth. Uh, we're right next to, next to Databricks. And uh, tomorrow there'll be another session from my colleagues on AI-powered streaming analytics for real-time customer experience. Uh, it'll be great to see you there. If you want to learn more information, we've got a microsite on, on our website there that you can, you can go to. And we're also running some hands-on workshops in conjunction with Databricks so you can get hands-on with the technology and see how easy it is to use. So thank you for your time today. Hope you have a good evening and you've enjoyed the conference so far. Thank you.